What is good, fam? Welcome to the Human Hope Podcast, episode five. Is it five? Maybe six? Five? I, I'm, I'm starting to lose count of the episodes because we're doing this. We are in it to win it. Your host, Carlos Enrique with Guzman and Chibolo Cabello. I'm here to give you hope and to have you give me some hope as well. Guys, um, I, I need to let you know that I'm recording this on Wednesday, March 31st, 2021. If you follow me on social media, you know, and oh, let me tell you what time it is. It is 6, 10 p.m. Wednesday, March 31st. If you follow me on social media, you know this came out the day before this episode released, or excuse me, I'm recording this the day before this episode released, which could quite possibly have capped the absolute worst week of my life. Now, I said could have, because there may be one week that beats it, that beats this week. But this week was horrible. It was horrible. It was hor- it was horrible. It was horrible from a car accident to a ex- like super intense conversation trying to save a relationship I've had for thirty years to a flood flooding my home and destroying um, my property uh, to um, my dog getting sick and having to go to the ER till three in the morning the next night. But finally, uh, he was fine. The doctor let him go home, but I'm exhausted and had to wake up the next day to the next day. Um, we had uh, Heather's favorite chicken, Chris, was murdered by this great horned owl that we ended up falling in love with the owl while it's laying next to the body of the dead chicken. And we rescue the owl. And I do this all on Instagram. It's just exhausting. We're so done. And we're like, God, how could we get any worse? Then later uh, yesterday evening, um, my beautiful dog, Pope, um, continued to get sick and um got sick to the point where we had to, um, together as a family say goodbye to him, which was the absolute hardest. It it was the hardest decision of my life, to be honest with you. Um, and so we're gutted. We go to bed last night, wake up today, get up because we're like, we're going to Denver. We're going to go heal as a family. We're in the Atlanta airport, changing flights, layover. My wife's at the bottom of an escalator. Someone drops her suitcase. It launches. 4,000 miles an hour straight down the escalator, swipes Heather's feet out from underneath her. She lands on the pointed edge of the escalator stair, breaks her wrist. And so instead of being in Colorado, here we are in Atlanta, and she just got out of Grady Memorial Hospital where we were taken by ambulance. So, how you doing? (laughs) But in this, we shall be hard pressed on every side, but we're not gonna be broken. No, because we have hope. We have hope. And so I called an audible today and I said, you know what? I had a podcast on how to have hard conversations uh, recorded and you guys are going to love that show. It's, it's very essential in our day and age and how the conversations we need to have. But today, no, we need to have a conversation on how to have hope even in the midst of the worst of the worst moments of your life, how to have hope when everything is falling apart, how to have hope in spite of your trauma, in spite of your circumstances. How can you still have hope? Because let me tell you, you can. So what did I do? I took my hydrocodone filled wife and I stuck her in front of a mic and we had a conversation about the hope we have today in the midst of this madness. Sit back, enjoy this conversation with my beautiful wife, Heather Whitaker, at Wit Farm on Instagram, as she drops some truth bombs on us on how to have hope in the trauma, but also how to build community that allows you to have them give you the hope. Here you go. Hey, uh, it is, <laughs> it, it is, is it the 30th or April 1st? 31st. It's the 31st. Oh my gosh. So tomorrow would be April 1st, which may, maybe we wake up tomorrow and God's like April fools. Just kidding. The whole last four days of your life has been a joke. Week. It's, it's been over. It's been a week today. Uh, guys, welcome to the Human Hope Podcast. Uh, Heather Whitaker. First time. For the first time. My wife, who, uh, as we record this, it is the 31st of March, 522 PM. We're in Atlanta, Georgia, in Blake Bergstrom and Allie Bergstrom's basement. You have a sling on your arm 
We are supposed to be in Denver, Colorado, Breckenridge, Colorado mm, right now. We're not. Um, and we have had a hell of a week. That's a good way of putting it. Is that a good way of putting it? Yeah. It's been um, one thing after another. And each time uh, something happens, yeah. we think, oh, this is it. This is it. And then the next day, something else happens. So uh, the, I, I called an audible for this week's podcast just because we're in the moment. We're actually like inside of the moment. We're, we're 12 hours. Um, what time is it? No, we're, we're 18 hours since we've had to put our love, the love of our life, our sweet dog Pope down. Mm. We're, it's still, the, the wound is fresh. Uh, we're only seven hours from when I didn't know if they were going to have to put you down in the hospital because you oh, broke your wrist. <laughs> we're, we're in a, a Not hospital. Not down, but. Yeah. yeah. Who knew? Like, well, I meant like for surgery oh, or yeah. something. Who knew? We are three days from a flood. So let's just, this is what I want to do. Let's back up. This beep, is, this is beep, human hope. Beep. Wow. Heather brought sound effects. <laughs> this is the human hope podcast. We're, we're going to be hopeful, but I want people to understand that you can still find hope in the midst Absolutely. of mm-hmm. honestly, people that have been watching us the last week have specifically said, I don't know how you guys are doing it. I get that a lot. I'm actually full of joy and that, that's oh. even without the bike it in, but my heart's <laughs> really full. No, it is. Your, your heart is full and my heart's full too. I mean, even Ali said it today, like just the joy that's in you. So let's do this. We'll, we'll get to the hope, but let's, let's talk about maybe the, the hell. For a second. All the things. All the things. Okay. So last Wednesday morning, I got a, or Carlos woke up to a phone call of our daughter had just gotten into an accident. Now she was fine. It was a fender bender, but it was just one of those like, you know, jarring moments that. Yeah. Oh gosh. I I, will. My phone was buzzing and I was like, I thought it was, it was so early. I thought I was snoozing my phone, but I was actually hanging up on her. (laughs) So she called like three, right here. three times. She left to work. We we're still sleeping. Yeah. She left to work and I'm like, oh, snooze. Bzz, bzz, oh, snooze. Bzz, bzz, oh, snooze. And finally <laughs> I was like, oh, she's calling. I picked up. She's like, dad, I got in a wreck. Ugh, and you. Words you don't want to hear. You heard it. I heard it and I jumped into action and I ran to her sister. And I was like, you have to go to work for your sister. And she's got in a car accident and just went on. Like we were just. Because it's scary. It, it's scary. But, the, but then so Hayla's like, I'm actually fine. Mm-hmm. So anyway. Fast forward. That was that was a jarring moment. Yes, right? jarring moment. So then we're doing and, life. Yep. The very next day we had some friends over. Yeah. And um, <sighs> lifelong friends. Lifelong. And when you have lifelong friends, you have um, hard conversations sometimes. And we, you, not me, yeah. um, had one of those. I, and it was, yeah. it was, it was wonderful, but also exhausting. Exhausting. It was. It was a. Honestly, it was a relationship shifting conversation. Yeah. Um, a relationship um, allowed the relationship to probably endure. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was about all the deep things, all the things I talk about Instagram. Mm-hmm. It was about race. It was about politics. It was about relationships. Relationships. It was about uh, everything. And so we went there and man, we were like, once again, it was like another midnight. Yeah. We're getting in bed going, wow, wow. that was yeah. exhausting. Mm-hmm. So I would say that, after those two events, we would think, man, like, we'll remember that week is oh, like for sure. That was one of the harder weeks of the year. Yeah. Not to mention, I um, actually am currently fasting and um, for a specific um, breakthrough that I'm wanting. And, you know, I, I don't know how many of you actually have ever fasted before, but I find that um, oftentimes that kind of stirs the pot, if you will. And I in this specific um, place that I'm looking for breakthrough, it, it had stirred. So that was just a, also oh, yeah. another underlining, like I began that on Monday and I had had just some emotional capacity that was taken because yeah. of this other thing that I'm, you know, yeah. And when you, when you say fasting, fasting. So, so in, yeah, you, in my faith, yeah. I yeah. believe that by, um, not consuming food particularly um it is a space of uh depriving myself to allow god to speak so i am focusing 
you know, so often in times when I'm hungry or whatever, I am actually sitting and praying and taking the time to hear from God um, and praying truths and promises over a specific area that um, that we want to see um, life in. Yeah. Yeah. And so, again, you can use that with food. You can do yeah. it. You can do other ways as well. Yeah. yeah. Biblically, it is with food. Yeah. Yeah. So so you're, you're doing like a biblical yes. fast uh-huh. going without food uh-huh. so that you can be open to hearing things yes. clearer. Yeah. So you did. Yeah. So. And it was, but it was also exhausting. Yeah. So. And that was just by Thursday. <laughs> Listen, it's Thursday. Heather's tore up. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I needed to look at our phone because I feel like was Friday an off day? Like, did we. Did anything happen on Friday? Because Saturday rolled around. <laughs> uh, let's see. So Friday, was I'm I out not, of town? I don't have my phone, so I can't look no, at the calendar, I was, but I, was, I don't know. I think I was in town. I mean, I think, no, I think it was an off day. Like, okay. not off day, but we it's had a day normal. off from drama. Yeah. Saturday. Then Saturday. Mm-hmm. So so Saturday rolls in, and um, we're actually excited because we love storms. Yeah. The thunder roll. We love it. We love all the things. Yeah. We love storms. We love oh, to sit on my the favorite. Floor. And so, yeah, we're, we're excited. Like the storm. The roll. forecast was major storm. Yeah. And we love to sit on the front porch and watch the storms roll in. And the storm rolled in. It, it sure did. It, um. And rolled. And rolled. Yes. And rolled. We actually Wait woke up. We woke up Saturday morning with gigantic thunder. So we woke up. Go ahead and say that again. We woke yeah, up. Yeah, we woke up and it was crazy thundering, like yeah. just ridiculous, like oh, more yeah. than we ever had experienced. Like yeah. Hope was up on our um, daughter's bed and he'd, he'd come up to my side of the bed and start yeah. like no- yeah. moving his nose at Which me. Which he's not that affected by thunder, but it just was literally a bowling alley. Closing your bedroom. eyes, it looked like somebody had a strobe flash. Yeah, I remember that. And I, I couldn't sleep because it it's was like, like somebody had a flashing. Yeah. I was like, wow. It was like, which is so awesome. It was, it was, it was, it was fun. So we're enjoying the storm. The storm happens all day, all day long. Pope is actually up on the sofa all day long because he's scared. Um, It was a lot. It was a lot of lightning, a lot of rain. But it also was nice because we kind of rested that day. Yeah. Like at home. Yeah. Felt, felt like, felt like a good restful day. So, we're getting towards the evening and I, I go to bed early. You go to bed early. Mm-hmm. You're like, you go to bed like at nine. Cause yep. you've had a couple late nights. Yep. Uh, I'm up, I'm up on the sofa, probably talking to you guys uh, on Instagram <laughs> and doing something. And then, so Hala and her boyfriend Brady are in the basement. Yeah. Which it, that's not allowed. It's actually not ever allowed, <laughs> but you were watching Ma- March Madness. I was. And we do occasionally allow them. Yeah. If they want to watch a movie or something yeah. to go down there. But yeah, but they but they're if they go down there, they're not allowed to make out. There's no door shut. There's yeah. yeah. There's not I mean they can make out like if if they like find the time oh between gosh, us going shush. up and down. Okay. <laughs> okay. Moving on. So so around so, hey, 11, eleven o'clock. Yeah. So Hala gets up to come upstairs. And when she gets to the stairs, it's, it's wet. And she automatically assumes that Pope peed, peed. which is funny because he, he never n- once he's peed never in the house. Peed in the house. <laughs> I mean, maybe when his baby. But she's like, Brady, Dad. And I walk down there, I walk down the steps and all of a sudden I take a step on the carpet and it's like slosh. Mm -hmm. It's not like some pee. Now it's like, there is a lot of Mm -hmm. water. And I just kind of look around. I go, I go to the back room that sometimes will get a little water in it Mm -hmm. and it's pouring. I open the door and it's like a river. It's it's just pouring pouring out. Which it was, or it's like three inches kind of below. So it had already, it was. Three inches full of yes, water. Full, the, that back that room. That back room, yeah. So it starts pouring out. I run upstairs and I wake you up. Wake like, me up. Babe. It's go time. It's go time. The basement's flooding. <laughs> yeah. So we literally for 30 minutes pulled every piece of furniture that was wood um, uh-huh. up off the ground. <clears throat> we opened our garage doors to allow the water just to oh, kind of- Oh, because the garage was flooding. Because the garage was flooding too, but the garage kind of is on a tilt. And so it just literally would roll straight out into the yard. And um, thankfully, you know, Brady, the boyfriend was there because he was able to help us move yep. The yep. couches and just all the things. We moved everything upstairs into our normal living space. It was more than 30 minutes. It was exhausting. We were it moving was. Things. It was. Well, I guess we were there till two. Yeah. So that's 11, three hours. Yeah. <laughs> three hours different than half an hour. Yeah. But yeah, so it was a lot of work. Yeah. And by the time we were done, we were in ankle deep water yep. in our basement. Yep. And it, um, 
the carpet's gone. I mean, like, oh, like for sure. The carpet was actually floating on top of the water. It was. Which I'd never it looked seen like that a before. waterbed. It did look like a waterbed when you stepped you step on was it. Like, loop, 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 loop. My That's parents my sound still effect. have a waterbed. Do they really? Yes. Right now? How random. They do? Weird. Like the same one from when you same were? Same one. Oh, I want to lay in that thing. Okay. Okay. So then uh, we're, I mean, we're exhausted. It's, yeah. It's too. And we're like, oh my gosh, are we? Can yeah. you believe it? We literally said that. Like, I can't. Oh, can yeah. you believe after the week we had that we would actually flood? No. This is crazy. Then I'm like, do we have flood insurance? You're like, no. no. I'm like, oh, geez. Yeah. And then so. Okay, so now we're at Sunday. Sunday morning. Brady's family, ironically. Um, Brady is Sohail's boyfriend. Yes. Has um, had a business of fire and water damage restoration. So they came over and were amazing and took over. They took out all the carpet. They drilled holes in the drywall. They just started doing all the things that they know how to do. And that was a gift. Um, I reached out on Instagram and got a bunch of fans, fans, dehydrators. Yeah, because you went to Home Depot and they were all out. Uh, We had people coming and bringing us lunch and dinner and taking all the trash that we, all the carpet and all the, all that stuff. Like it was an amazing community, like gift to us. Yeah of blessing. And yeah. so, um, <laughs> it was, it was, hope. that was, that was hope. hope. It was so hopeful. And, and, you know, I think <clears throat> I remember back when Sohalo was in the hospital and 2019. Yes. And so many people were like, Oh, it must be nice for you to have people to come in. You know, I've been in the hospital and nobody came. And, and to that, like this week, I just speak into like, you reap what you sow. Mm. And we have sowed into yeah. so many people's lives that in, spaces like this people show up and yeah. it was a gift yeah. um and it gives hope to those times when you are exhausted and you don't want to keep giving um the moments come back to you yeah. so yeah. it was it was a gift we felt full it was exhausting <laughs> but, but we were like look i mean like in a day God. yeah, yeah like, it was this great is, this is amazing and so- we were like we cannot wait till Wednesday when we get to go on vacation for three days yes. in Colorado. Cause we were like, what a week. It's been a crazy week. Let's get to Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Let's get to Wednesday. But instead we got to Sunday and, and again, and you had to go to Atlanta. I had to go to Atlanta. No, this, that was Sunday. So actually the day of cleaning, you left that afternoon because yep. you had to go overnight to Atlanta and do yep. and work all day on Monday. Yep. And I woke up, wait, no, no, it, it was that day though. Pope, Got into the yes compost. Sunday morning. Pope ran out as I was carrying things like cleaning. Pope is our dog. Pope is our dog, and he went and ran to our compost. He was being so naughty and running, not listening to me. And <laughs> he that afternoon had thrown up twice. And one time I heard this like clank when he threw up, and I went over there and it was this a big black thing. But as I looked at it more, it was actually a mango seed. And so I was like, oh gosh, what else did he swallow? And the next day on Monday, he actually was getting like, he had thrown up a couple other times and he just was getting really lethargic and not moving. And we decided in the evening because we knew we were going on vacation on Wednesday. Hold on. I I was in Atlanta. You're skipping the part. I drove to Atlanta. I worked. You you worked. Hard worker. (laughs) I worked hard for my money. Look, I'm not trying to get you to like say that I'm a hard worker, but no, no, I drove to Atlanta, came back, was pretty exhausted by the yeah. time I got back on sure, Monday. Sure, a day trip, like, yeah. you know, overnight. Yeah. So, but we but we made the decision, we need to take Pope because we need to see if he was still throwing up. He was not eating a thing. Yeah. He was not moving. He wouldn't stand up. And I'm thinking, does he have an avocado pit in his yep. stomach? And we just need to make sure that x-ray him. And he's been naughty before yep. and, and gets weak sometimes if he eats something bad. He has a very sensitive stomach. And he'll so, lay there for two days. Yeah. So I, But I just needed to confirm that there wasn't blockage so that then when we leave him with, you know, the dog sitter, that he's, he, he's he'll be fine. Yeah. He'll be fine. So we did that. So we go, we mm-hmm. go, we, we take him. The kids are a little nervous when, when sure, we take him. Of course. Um, and so, and I'm like, he's fine. Yeah. You really were. You're like, he's going to be fine. Um, and so we're, we sit there and I, then I start Insta storing that night. Yeah. And then, so well, a lot of this, play, please, some of you Insta story everything. Yeah. But I actually put this in a highlight on my Insta stories. Oh, okay. So it's called worst week or something like that. <laughs> so I, awesome. I put, I put that up there. Uh, I'm just, I'm naming it that. So we never have it again. And so, yeah, we start going and we're there. Um, we're there until pretty late. And yeah, then we like come 11. Home. And then they're like, well, we have to wait for the x-ray to be read. We can call you. So you brought me home yep. and I actually fell asleep and you, I but you were like, up. you were like, just wake me up yeah, when it's time to go like, back and yeah. get home. And the next thing I know is I hear his little Well, nails. hold on. Yep. 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 So I'm waiting till 
two fifteen in the morning Yikes. when the vet finally calls and says, "Hey, we we've got the X ray. Um, it actually looks like he doesn't have anything in his set. There's no blockage, Woo-hoo. so we think it's gastritis, and you can come get him, and you just need to give him some bland food, and he'll get over this." Yeah. So there it was. So we, I go and I get him. I bring him home. You wake up when he comes yeah, home. He, heard him. He lays down on the floor yeah. in front of the bed, and we're like, "Okay, well, he's awesome. he's, he's got this. We can leave on Wednesday. We're gonna be good." Yeah. Tuesday. Tuesday wake morning. Up. I wake up and I'm in, from my bathroom window. I can see my chicken coop. Yeah. And all my chickens were actually in the coop. I'm when, exhausted already. You were asleep. Yeah. Like no, I knew just you were just from listening to this story. Oh, just <laughs> like I'm so exhausted, oh, emotionally exhausted, but keep going. So Tuesday morning, I look out. My chickens are actually inside their coop. And I knew the night before I did not close the door. So I was really confused by that. I'm like, well, maybe one of the kids did when I was taking Pope to the ER. I don't know. Like, I just did not go and close the door because we had such a late night at the ER. It just slipped my mind. So I had, you know, I don't know. It was like 9 or 10 in the morning. I went down and I started to record. Yeah. And I at the same time, got on a podcast that yes. somebody was interviewing me yes. at the same so exact were, same time. You were working on a podcast and I walked down and I just started recording what I do to put on my little Instagram. And I was talking to my girls and I'm like, hey, girls, I'm like, where's Chris? Now, let me give you a little backstory. Chris is my newest chicken who um, I got last fall. And because it was a tiny baby, you kind of have to raise it separately and then integrate them into the main and it has an afro can you just say yes oh i gave a clue Um, (laughs) yes i think everybody knows where this is going i um i was like where's chris guys like on the video you're saying video this this to my chickens and as chickens talk back to her they do we hello snow white (laughs) and so i look and i see chris dead on the ground and i'm like oh my gosh and in my instagram i'm like what is happening this week? Why is this like? Yeah, you yeah, literally are like, 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 and then as that, I see this, like I'm looking over, I'm, I'm trying. Cause like, I don't know how gr- like grotesque a lot of times when predators kill chickens, like they like rip their heads off or it's just kind of really gory. And so I, I see her body, but I don't want to look. And then I kind of look over and I see almost like this wing of like, I, at first I thought it was a hawk cause hawks like to um, kill chickens and, I was like, oh my gosh. And then I see it's an owl. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I'm it's tangled. And I'm recording this whole thing, yes, literally. Yes. And I'm like, oh my gosh, guys, an owl died trying to get Chris. Now I have these like strings across their fence to try to predator proof my chickens yeah. and help them to not jump out. So it's almost like a crisscross pattern across the top of their yep. fence. Yep. Um, so birds can't just swoop in and swoop out. Well, little did I know what would happen if one tried. And yeah. so um, this owl is literally tangled in, in the wires. And as I'm looking at it, it turns its head and looks at me. So it's still alive. I thought it had died. And while too. you're recording. At all while I'm recording. It's the best video ever because it's so all raw. The emotions. It's so raw. By this point, I'm crying because I can't, I don't think I can handle all that has already come to yeah. us this week. And um, and so then fast forward, I am bawling. Like, and it was not bawling because my chicken, like I've had lots of chickens die. Yeah. That's just kind of the nature of having chickens or farm animals. Like it's just, there is a lot of death. Um, so it wasn't that it just was all Everything. the pieces the and blood. it was just the dam that broke, you know, and I am, I come in and I'm crying and I'm, but, I'm not a cry. I'm not a huge crier. I may tear up here and there, yeah. but like, I don't cry right. very often yeah. and but I'm sobbing. You're sobbing, but you're actually, I don't know if you remember this. You're sobbing silently. Oh yeah. Cause you're on a podcast yeah, I'm recording, recording for somebody and I'm standing there waiting for you to look at me as you know and, and I see you and I see you kind of flap your arms or something like this and I was like oh she needs me to so I, I answer another question uh-huh. without looking and finally I look up and you were uh, not okay uh-uh. you were and you're like <laughs> an owl got Chris is dead and I look at you and the host is like is everything okay and I was like uh hold on babe what's wrong oh oh my gosh yes one of our chickens uh, just got killed by an owl. I need to go. She's like, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Well, hey guys, thanks for listening to the Scar Stories podcast. And I was like, this is horrible. I promise we'll fix this. And we go tearing down there. Yeah. And, and I'm, no, I 
sobbed. Oh yeah, you Remember? did. For you like actually sobbed in my five in my minutes. Chest. Like I haven't sobbed this way when so Halo was in the hospital. Was in the hospital. Like all these things in the past year. Like I have not sobbed. Everything so it was, came out. It all came. It out. all yeah. came out. Like over a chicken. It was the. It was. It was maybe the worst week we've had since so Halo. For sure. Was in the hospital in yeah. 2019. So. You're sobbing. Losiah mm-hmm. is hearing you sob. He's just waking up. Mm-hmm. He's like, why is mom sobbing? Mm-hmm. You know? And I'm like, it's okay. It's just a chicken. You know? So, <laughs> so I'm like, we go outside and I'm like, Hey, the, the, like there's actually a freaking owl. The most gorgeous. It was amazing. The most gorgeous And then I owl. felt bad for the owl. Like Chris is gone. So like, whatever but like the owl was so tangled up and so then it became rescue mission of the owl which is so fun like we love stories that happen like this you know and it was beautiful and we untangled it and we just got it all on instagram ended up taking it to a rescue place yep perfect yep come home and i'm like uploading the insta story i'm like Mm -hmm. you know um uh, Sharon, we IG live back and forth. She's like, mm-hmm. people are trying to get me to help you with the owl. And yeah. people just think that Sharon and I are just, you know, like nature people. It's really Heather is the nature person Amen. out of everybody. So uh, you walk into the house. I walk into the house and Pope's breathing a little heavy. And the girls were like, mom, he's been panting like this. And I'm like, it's OK. He's fine. You know, it's just part of him getting better. And then I hear it and I'm like, ooh, this isn't good. So I call the vet. They're like, well, you can bring him back in. It was an emergency vet that we took him to. So we'd already spent a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and they're like, well, within 48 hours, like we don't charge you for another doctor visit. So come on in. So I I was like, I'm gonna take him in. I just wanted to be double sure that if we if we left on Wednesday, he is okay. He's just in the process of healing. So I take him in. Well, so I walk in and, and Santa goes, Dad, mom's taking Pope back to the vet. Mm-hmm. And when she said that, I was like, oh, mm-hmm. you, you are not like this. Like, you're not a. No. You, like, you're, I'm a lot. Yeah. Like, yes. You, you do not take the animal to the vet. Or my children. Or the doctor. Well, I don't take them to the vet. <laughs> you don't either. take our children to the vet. <laughs> and, and, and we're better for that. So you go. And yeah. I'm like, do you want me to come? You're like, no. Nah. And you've, you've actually, like, you're exhausted. I can mm-hmm. see it in your eyes. You're just like, I just want to be by myself. Yeah, it was actually great. Yeah. Little. And so you go. We have some friends come over to bring to us dinner. To bring us dinner. Yeah, some because of, our, of our week was terrible. Yeah, people were dropping food off. Guys, we're, we're like on the meal train at this point <laughs> yeah. in our community. Because people are like, wow, the Whitakers, have had their, their basement's flooded. Their chicken's dead. Oh, yeah. they're, you know, they're, so Hale's been, you know, mm-hmm. and acts, all, all these things. Is a super close uh, family friend of us, ours, who were actually in the hospital room at some pivotal moments with Sohela as well. And um, so it was, I, now that I look back, it was God's gift of, yes. of having other ears, other arms to wrap around us. And so um, all that to say is I dropped Pope off. It's COVID, so you don't really get to go in. They come to your car. And then I'm like, can I go get something to eat? And they said yes. So the doctor was going to call. So we're at home. home. We're uh-huh. eating. Eating. And the doctor calls. Calls me. My phone. Yes. Actually. And so I answer the phone and I put it on speaker. Yep. Because I am I put it on speaker thinking, oh, she's going to be like, all right, come get Pope. Yeah. You know? And she goes, so hey, this I'm is gonna the doctor. I'm going to be frank with you. And she, gets, she says a couple things. And then she says, so I'm going to be, I'm just going to be frank with you. Not what you want and to hear. and when you when we heard that, I think all of us, mm-hmm. I think I may have even handed the phone to you because I didn't want to have to mm-hmm. deal with it. And she just starts going down. Lots of big words and you know possible problems and long story short, it, the amount of money it would have cost would have yeah. been ridiculous. Yeah. It yeah. could have been totally curable. She did say that, yep. but but she said it, it could, some, but it, there's a chance it. And he was seven, chance. and big dogs like. Pope, their average age is seven, eight. Yeah, we, we've all, lucky, we've always claimed nine. we've we've been claiming twelve over Pope for a Always gonna be twelve, you know, sure. whatever. But she's like, he's got a hundred and four degree temperature. Mm-hmm. His, his liver was his liver mm-hmm. was failing. His all kinds of things. His body was slowly shutting down. Yeah. So it was going to take at least seven days in the hospital to even possibly yeah correct this. Right. And to be honest with you, like we 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 can't afford that. No. Like, uh, and that and that's the hardest thing, right? And it so, was the w- worst decision ever. So we two of our kids were home. So Halo was at church um, volunteering, and um, and so I called. She wasn't answering her phone. I called a couple of people at church and told her to come home. And so she came home, and we were all on the couch crying. Um, we hadn't made a decision yet, but we kind of knew where it was going. And I go outside to call the doctor again. Yes. And my friend Rob, that's with us. Mm-hmm. Rob, I actually, 
I, I, this is the third time I've talked about Rob on the podcast. Rob is Rob from the Empathy Podcast, who hey, said maybe Rob could be on the maybe podcast I'll have it, but but Rob is the one that told you in the yeah. hospital. I mm-hmm. I you don't have to be okay because I'll be okay for yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Pivotal. So he's kind of doing that again. They're kind of doing that again. Yeah. Actually, the doctor mm-hmm. calls back and says, "You want me to talk to him because you mm-hmm. guys aren't okay." Yeah. So Rob is like, "Let me be okay for you." Mm-hmm. Rob talks, asks some questions. What mm-hmm. would you do if this is your dog? And you could just hear the hesitation in the doctor's voice, mm-hmm. and none of us wanted it with every word. She wanted that to give hope because medically it wasn't finished. Like medically, they had more things to do. Yeah, but at what cost? Yeah. And so um, the kids, I think we're this, praying for unity. Oh, for sure. Because I'm not. I'm not necessarily for, unified. No, you were ready to mortgage our house for Pope. Yeah, I was like thirty grand. Let's mm-hmm. go. Let's no, you know. not going to happen. And so. The gift in all this was throughout the day, the kids had taken Pope out and each time he tried to crawl underneath a bush. And my kids know that that's a sign of dogs as they are dying. And all day long, he would look at us as almost trying to tell us something. And that was a gift because when my friend Jamie said, what do you want or what are you hearing? And I said, I hear um, he's done. Oh, he's done. That's what I said. And um, I was hearing home and that's for later in the story, but um, he's done. I think he's done. And, and I said, and he's been trying to tell us that all day. And every kid was Uh, myself included, actually, when you said that, but agreed to that. Yeah. So we knew we had to make the worst decision of our dog's life. Yeah. I, I mean, on, I, honestly, it may have been the worst decision of my life. I, oh, I don't, it's brutal. I don't know it's if I've ever brutal. had to make that decision. So I called the vet and talked to the doctor and asked her how to go about this. And we, as a family, got in the car and mm-hmm. family plus two boyfriends, mm-hmm. which we, they, loved. we loved them. And they were very um, instrumental in mm-hmm. in the healing of this night. But we go uh, and yeah, we go in the room and... Um, He wagged his tail when we, he came in, which he hadn't been able or he wasn't wagging his tail in the last couple of days. No. And he was excited to see us and laid down. And he did because well, all of us were there mm-hmm. like at one time, you know, like we were all there. Um, he knew and he knew and, and he laid down and whenever we said our goodbyes and yep. um, I stayed um, with him and with the doctor came in and um, yeah. And then, he, I was, I was with him. It was actually a holy moment. I was, I was with him just staring right into his eyes. Um, kind of had my hand right next to his nose. So he would smell in me and I just was like, daddy's here. And then, then that was it. So we leave and I, I am done. I am broke. I'm like, God, at this point, like God, Honestly, I start having these God, what is wrong conversations. I, this I, and you, like you're at not, 11 o'clock at night. No, yeah, I'm, I'm, it, you're not, I, I am there. I'll be honest with yeah. you. Like I was there. I was like, Listen, I write books and I preach in churches about Jesus and Holy Spirit and things. And I, I just, the carnal side of me, the hum, humanity in me was like, what, what is cursed? What is wrong? What, what have I done? Did, yeah, I you done kept saying, wrong? are we on, is this a spiritual attack? And I said, yeah. no. Yeah. Yep. And so you did, you said it just like that. So we get home and everyone's crying and. It, Half and, of us want to go on the trip that was five hours away. <laughs> yep. So now, I mean, now we're at. 1130. We're, we're, we're at less than 24 hours ago. So, um. Half of us want to go on the trip, which we were leaving in the morning um, at 3.45 in the morning because <laughs> Heather likes to book the first freaking it's flight all out day there. every single day, every single time. So we finally, at the end, I kind of said, I went up to one of the kids that didn't really want to go. They're like, they just kind of wanted to mourn at home. And I said, listen, I just, I feel like we're supposed to go as a family and heal. Well, because our house is chaotic. We have oh. basement stuff everywhere. Like Upstairs just, is a disaster zone yeah, because of the Yeah, it just flood. would not be a place where we could actually all be together and rest. And even yeah. though it was going to be torture to get out with two hours of sleep, like I just felt like it was what we needed to do. So we start packing, we pack, we go. Yep. We go to sleep, kind of. Uh, we wake up this morning. Yeah. Rise and, and shine. Rise and let's shine. Go. We go. We go. We get to the airport. We're sitting in the, um, we're kind of all crying on the way through mm-hmm. TSA and everyone's kind of crying on their own. Because again, we, it's so fresh. Pope is so fresh. And we. Um, no, I was bawling well, on the plane. Like, well, <laughs> I know, I know. I, we, we, we go to Sky Club. You're like, yeah, you're, you're, you start crying a lot because you're, you're looking at Instagram now. Yeah, I'm like reading the text that everyone yeah. sent me. And then and so I'm... you're crying. Then we get on the first flight from Nashville to Atlanta mm-hmm. and you are wailing. Like I, the, the guy behind you, 
I know. He, I know. We thought. I know. Yeah. I mean, poor I guy. Know. You know. But I, I just kind of. I couldn't help it. No, I know. I kept guys. putting my hand over there, and I was gonna make a big deal. I just kind of kept touching, touching your mm-hmm. hand, hold your hand, letting you cry, and then I put my AirPods in, in noise cancellation mode so and that I couldn't hear you anymore. Mm-hmm. And I went to sleep. <laughs> Wake up in Atlanta. Yeah. And we, we have. Had- 30 minutes. Yes. Uh, actually, the, the flight had bo- had started, started boarding, boarding yeah, to go to Denver. 30 minutes, yeah. So I, we I just- a little muscle in our hustle. Yeah. And, and I'm, again, just like this, Lord, get us this, just get us to Denver. This has been the worst week ever. We are in the A terminal, going to the B terminal. You go down the escalator. You and Sohela are way yeah. ahead of us. Yeah. It's a really long escalator. If you've ever been to Atlanta airport, they're really long. I mean, I don't know how long they are, but they're super long. I'm standing at the top. There's two escalators going down side by side. The guy- in your lane of an escalator mm-hmm. is standing next to me. And all of a sudden I hear something go boom. And he's trying to wrangle something. And then I see he lets it go and it's his suitcase. And I, it's like one of those hard shell away and suitcases. there are probably 30 stairs in between us. Oh, it's, it's going fast. I mean, and I saw it going straight towards you before I could, it was one of those moments where I'm like, I should, I could have yelled something, but but it, even what would I have done? I'm I on know. an escalator. I couldn't like jump out of the way. And you, you and know? Sohaila are standing side yeah. by side. And to be honest with you, at the moment, I was more scared. Sohaila. It was going to hit Sohaila. And nope. It, it impacted me and crushed you. swept me off my feet. Her Heather's arms and feet are in the air. You land. Mm-hmm. I'm way up top. So I don't see how you land. I'm Meanwhile, like, the escalator is just going down when this is all happening. Yeah. Yeah. And you're almost to the bottom. Yeah. And it's taking you out. And, and then I hear like gas and everything and me and, and me and Lucia and Sayana who are, who are on the top come running down and I'm thinking oh you know she's her bruised. ego's bruised her ego's like you know she, no. whatever but but when I get to you I realize you're crying in a totally different way yeah I was hurt you were hurting and you got think the first thing you said is I think I broke my arm uh-huh. and I was like no 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 god it was a different kind of pain and it, chaos ensues mm-hmm. airport people show up mm-hmm. I'm look I'm like I can't believe this is it's and over. I cannot keep it in. Oh, you like, are. I am. The, the, it's the chicken cry times 10 because it added pain. Plus, Oh my gosh. I was in so much pain and I am in shock. I'm grieving. I'm mm, mm. like, just what in the world is happening? Like why? And so you just kept saying that, like what in the world, what in the world? And me too. And, the, and, and our kids are, traumatized at this moment like they they cannot believe this is happening like guys hopefully listening to this you cannot believe <laughs> this is imagine being my kids you know i'm looking at those sides probably looking up like is okay is a light gonna fall on my head right? next like what what is happening and so oh. we they're like we're gonna have to call an ambulance yeah we're in the middle like we're on a layover it's like what what do you do then so in, in a city like we don't we live, don't in live city. here yeah. So and we have lots of friends that live here, but ev- it's Atlanta. Like everyone's an hour away from the airport, you know? So, so we'll fast forward all the, all the others. Yeah. We, we go to the hospital. Your arm is fractured. Yes. We miss our flight. Yes. Uh, I, I'm praying that you don't have to have surgery. Thank God. It's a fracture in a place yep. that you don't have to have surgery right now. Right. Uh, you, they give you drugs. You're yep. in a cast in a sling. And here we are at our friend's house because <laughs> you called Delta and you we got us on, on another flight, flight tonight. tonight. <laughs> so let's go. So I'm thinking, you know what? Let's just go back to Nashville. Oh, heck no. Uh-uh. I don't give up that way. No. And you you didn't. And so, so <laughs> after the worst week ever. It wasn't the worst week ever, but you know what it was? It was like that torture where they do one drip on you at a time, you know? Yeah. Um, and um, that's what this week was. A, a chicken, big deal. You know, like, mm. yes, it sucks to lose Pope. Yeah. Yes, it sucks to break an arm. Yes, yes it but sucks like to lo- lose to, your basement, to lose your basement. But like all the, it's not my kids are all here. We yeah. don't, we're not we don't have you know an awful prognosis with a illness. Like we like things are still okay, yeah. and yet it was so much all yeah. in such a small space that it was just so weighted and yeah. so hard. Um, and yet, yet we're good. We are. We, we're actually. Great. All of us, the kids, like yeah. we've got joy. We're absolutely. We're, we've, I, I think when you've been through a battle, sure. I, I de- definitely think it helps. We've been, th- we've been through it as a family a couple of times. And yeah. And we're, we're kind of looking at this one like, <laughs> no. And you know, I think I'm going to talk. I know not everyone is churched on here or 
you know, is a part of a church or even religious at in any means. Yeah. But I think that um, what the enemy wants to do is if he can't take your soul, right? If he can't get you to not believe in Jesus, um, he's going to try to discourage you and um, get your mind in a place of hopelessness. Mm. And we have full hope even in the darkest moments, yeah. even in the darkest moments, we have hope. And that is um, just where we are. And that is just evidence in our kids' life and in our lives in moments yeah. of weeks that you think, really? Mm. Like, I mean, on Sunday, we thought, this is it. There can't, yeah. I mean, like, what else can come? And then- <laughs> I literally said- You did say it I once. said, I don't want to go on this trip. Uh-huh. Because I said I don't I don't want I don't want the plane to go down you I don't did. want something to happen like, I was kind of so kidding dumb. yeah yeah but no <laughs> you literally got taken out sweep the leg Johnny you got taken I- out sweep the leg you have a problem with that no sensei no mercy I did who what in the world I have traveled my entire adult life have never seen that but can I be honest yeah I'm kind of happy that I have a good story of how I broke my arm. But, but can we stop having stories this week? Like maybe can you break your arm next week? You know, like this yeah. is a, this is a, you know how, how they say Nashville, we have like once a century floods, mm-hmm. but for some reason Nashville's had two <laughs> century floods, floods in, in 10 years. Yeah. I feel like we're having our century wow. week. All that to say is I love doing life with you and I love doing um, battles with you and I'm thankful for the community that we have um, worked to establish. And okay. So for those listening, I I think this is very practical. They're like, well, okay. Like, what does that mean? Like, how can I get a community that will surround? Because here's, here's the thing. We'll, We'll take this for example. Today, people are asking to Venmo me money. People are asking me, okay. I'm and not, I'm not, you've ignored them. I've ignored them. I'm like, nah, people are kind of finding it on their own. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm listen, I'm healthy. I'm able-bodied. I can go pay whatever bills, you know, yeah. it's going to be hard, but I'm going to do it. But then I had some friends who I've poured into their lives. And so they took it upon themselves to make known yeah. my Venmo. They put it on their Instagram and suddenly we're starting to see like, like financial shift in our lives today because people are pouring in. Mm-hmm. And people will say things like, oh, well, Carlos, like, you know, you just have, a, you got 150,000 followers. This, I'll get this all the time. You have 150,000 followers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, no wonder things are whatever for you or whatever. And I'm like, do you actually know the work and the plowing in yeah. the field mm-hmm. that it's taken to right. harvest the community that right. I have right now? And that's, I'm, we're, well, I'm not just talking about social media. Uh, 99.9% are people are people are never going to have like a large social media community, right. but let's talk for a second about real community, community and, yeah. and how you've harvested it yeah. and, and how it's sprung back up. And, you know, I think the, the hardest part is in our culture right now, there's such a spirit of offense and we are offended and we are canceling friendships and walking away when really like, it is worth every ounce of hard work. Now, I'm not talking about staying in abusive relationships or relationships that are super toxic, but there is this gift in in fighting and and pushing through relationships. And it's taken some time. Like, oh. and there are seasons. Like we, we have had friends. A season of loneliness like never before. Absolutely. It's not Absolutely. always been like no, it was off <laughs> like what year was that? Like two thousand and four. 14, 15, I don't know. I don't, it's like when that. we moved into this house. I'll tell you that because, yes, because, because it, ain't nobody show right, up. Right. It was. So it was six years, five, six years ago. And it literally was, it felt like we moved, but yet we were in our same exact city yeah. and it was super lonely. And, um, and yet I continue to invite. Yeah. I continue to love how I wanted to be loved, even though I was so devastated that I had lost lots of friendships that I had poured into. Yeah. Um, it was brutal because it is painful to give and then to be to wa- have been walked away from. Uh, and yet, on the flip side of that, like 
who we have in our life right now would have never been in our life Ever. if we hadn't gone through, walked the, through that. Gone through that loneliness. And right now it's beyond anything that I could oopsie. Beyond okay. anything that I could ever dream oh, of. So it, it is sweet. The harvest is sweet right now in mm-hmm. relationships. Really quickly, maybe what what are like two or three practical steps you 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 mentioned the word invite yeah you invited yeah. people what are some practical steps people listening can take to harvest this good community because again people are like i i wonder if anyone will show up if my basement flooded like mm-hmm. what are some things people can do specifically to harvest this sort of community in their lives um i think you do what you want to be done to you mm. and mm. so Come you on. show up and you it takes it takes pursuing people yeah. um, and that doesn't always get reciprocated. And, yeah. and it, it, it takes confidence in going, that's okay. Like I'm not, I'm not doing this to get, um, I'm doing this because I want to give. And by doing that, when you give, um, it does come back to you. Uh, and we've had two years of, yeah harvest yeah. in that. And and here's the other thing I'd like to say about that is how's your arm? It's fine. Are you sure? Keep going. You're kind of holding your breath like you're hurting. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Did you hit it? No. Why aren't you telling me if it's hurting? Shh. Okay. I, what was I going to say now? I interrupted myself. I know. Oh no, I know what I was going to say. Not every relationship that you sow into is going to come back. Totally. And so back. Yeah, no. There's good, there's going to be times you're, you're out there sowing, 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 yeah. and oh, it's a famine. Mm-hmm. And that's painful. And that's where you get to check your heart and your confidence in, in not woe is me, not, oh, nobody's showing up for me. Because when you start speaking that, when you start yeah. speaking the negativity and the lies, like that is what's going to come to you. Yeah. Like you are going to reap what you sow. Yeah. So therefore you begin to live the opposite life. As our pastor says, Mm -hmm. like you, you know, if somebody is being rude to you, you bless them, you love on them, you know, and, um, and, and things change. And here's the other thing. It takes time. Like it takes time, just like a garden. Like I'm a gardener. We'll we'll, we'll have her back to talk gardening one day. Yes. Um, but it, there is times of waiting and there is times of, uh, plowing the land and pulling up the weeds. And, you know, it, it, there's so many metaphors there that it just takes work. So the hope in today is, is it is possible and yet it is not easy, but it is worth it. Yeah. Oh, it is possible. It's not easy, but it is worth it. Cue the music. Wood Farm, Heather, can I call you Wood Farm? Is that weird? Weird. Heather. Thanks for um, Heather's weird here. You don't call me Heather, babe. Yeah, babe. Thanks for your insight. Um, thanks for doing this podcast while you're on drugs <laughs> and have a broken arm. And we're gonna go. We're gonna get. A, we're gonna go tonight. Like in, in an hour, go. we're going to Colorado. Amen. And so when you guys hear this, we're gonna be in Colorado. Um, so anyway, thanks for the conversation, babe. Love you. Ooh, to relive that one more time was intense. And uh, I just want to thank you guys. First of all, I, I don't even have yet the number of dollars that have come in on Venmo, but I can tell you this. So Hala's medical bill from 2019 is going to be canceled because of the hope other people have in us. And I thank you is not enough. Um, but I, I'm, I'm filled with hope for humanity again because of you guys. So thank you. Thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, we're gonna we're gonna hop into um, how to have crucial conversations next week. So make sure you come back. It'll be another Thursday episode. I'm grateful that you guys hung out with me and my wife Heather this week on Human Hope. Guys, you guys go be hope for somebody else because you guys have been hope for me this last week, and now it's time for you to be hope for somebody else from the Human Hope family. Godless Whitaker saying, "I'll see you next week on Human Hope." 